Hey friends, happy Thursday. Welcome back to Hot News. Hope you enjoyed your New Year's Day if you had it off. If not, I hope you enjoyed it either way. Yeah, that's. I hope you're having a good life. That's the point that I'm trying to make here. And with that, let's go ahead and get on into the good news of Hot News. Start off with some interesting rumors that are coming out about AMD's next generation of graphics cards, more specifically what is known as the Navi 21 GPU, or potentially it will be called the RX 5900 XT or 5800 XT, or they could just come up with their own naming scheme. Who knows what they're actually going to call it, but there are some interesting, uh, really impressive rumors coming out about the chip, which a lot of them actually seem like they could potentially happen, and some of them seem a little farcical, but for the most part, it looks like we're going to get a really powerful GPU out of AMD this year, potentially in the next couple of months. If we look at how AMD launched their GPUs last year, CES came with the unexpected announcement of the Radeon 7, which was a super powerful, really ridiculous card that didn't make a whole lot of sense. But with this Navi 21 GPU on a new architecture could be that surprise launch, but with actual performance to back it up. So the specs that we're looking at are it being on a 505 millimeter die, which is over double the size of the current Navi 10 GPUs that are out there, as well as the fact that it's going to be on the seven nanometer plus lithography, which is slightly better than the previous seven nanometers that the original Navi is based on. So going from the 5700 XT to the 5900 XT, we're expecting a 20% increase in transistor density for that die size, which if everything stays equal would mean that the performance of the 5900 XT would be 2.4 times that of a 5700 XT, which would put it in 2080 Ti territory, if not slightly faster. There are a few issues with them getting that type of performance, including the fact that it would be super power hungry because the 7 nanometer plus only gives you about 10 to 15 percent better power efficiency on the chips. Two, AMD, even with the better power efficiency, isn't quite as efficient as NVIDIA. And then number three, it doesn't look like the memory bandwidth would be able to handle a GPU that's that powerful. However, that could be made up for with a 512-bit memory interface, which if you look at what's on the screen right now, could be possible, which would mean that we could get 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 as opposed to the 16 gigabytes of HBM2 that were on the Radeon 7. So there's a lot of developments that are going on here that could mean that we're getting a 2080 Ti competitor out of AMD. And it seems like they could potentially price it in that $1,000 to $1,200 territory, which if we get 2080 Ti level specs for $1,000, it would mean that AMD has the better high-end graphics card buy. However, AMD has been rumored to be readying the 2080 Ti Super for many, many months now, and they could just drop that as soon as AMD even gives a hint of releasing the 5900 XT. But the point is, it looks like AMD is going to be releasing some good stuff this coming year when it comes to graphics cards. And one of the things that I did want to mention was the fact that with the 5700 and 5700 XT, we're actually not seeing the full implementation of the new architecture that AMD has built. It's on RDNA, but the instruction set that they use was still based on GCN. It's with this seven nanometer plus, the Navi 21 GPU, that the instruction set is actually gonna move over to RDNA or what AMD is calling RDNA 2. So it's actually going to be a completely new GPU. It's gonna be even more different than the 5700 XT besides just the gigantic GPU die size and the raw specs. It's going to have a new instruction that as well. And with this, Buildzoid also released a video saying that he doesn't think the Navi 21 will be twice the speed of the Navi 10. You can check out his reasoning up there. A lot of it has to do with power draw and memory bandwidth. He thinks that if they only go with a 384-bit memory interface, that it would be 71% faster instead of 140% faster, which would still be a relatively decent GPU. But you can check out his video right up there to get the full 30-minute uh, deep dive into that. But hopefully we only have to wait a few more days for AMD to discuss this, considering CES and their keynote is coming up on Monday, January 6th. But then there's also some leaks coming out about some of their mobile GPUs that might be launching alongside their new Renoir APUs. The Ryzen 7 4800H being leaked with the 
Radeon RX 5600 M 6 gigabyte graphics card and in the Fire Strike benchmarks that are showing up actually seems to indicate that it might be better than the RTX 2060 mobile graphics card which is more equivalent to like a 1660 desktop but then that I mean that's just how mobile graphics cards work so it looks like uh, the RX 5600M might be a worthwhile competitor. The 5600 XT desktop doesn't look like it's gonna make a whole lot of sense. There's more leaks coming out about the 5600 XT indicating that it's gonna be in the 280 to $300 region, which is kind of what you can get a 5700 for, especially if you add AIB partner costs onto that $300, getting a $330 um, RX 5600 XT when you can easily get that on a 5700 is not gonna make a whole lot of sense, especially considering that I got my 5700 XT on Black Friday for $280. I, this is a really, really hard sell um, in the desktop component, but maybe not in the mobile component. And then there's a new report coming out from Passmark indicating that AMD now has 40% of the CPU market share of all of the people who have used Passmark. You can see the precipitous decline of Intel's market share here in the last part of 2019 with AMD resurging like nobody's business, which there's obvious reasons behind this. Ryzen 3000 has been phenomenally successful. And it does look like a Taiwanese newspaper has indicated that AMD is going to be discussing their Zen 3 plans at CES in just a few days. We detailed what um, some rumors have come out regarding the Zen 3 process and how it could potentially be up to 17% faster than what we currently have. If you missed that, it's in yesterday's hot news. Check it out right up there. But AMD has a lot of stuff that's still exciting for 2020. GPUs look like they might potentially get even better. 5700 and 5700 XT are actually really decent uh, mid-tier buys. And then Ryzen 4000 looks like it's gonna be super exciting. But Intel doesn't look like they have a whole lot up their sleeve with new internal slides indicating that the 10900K is anywhere from two to 26% faster than the 9900K in various benchmarks. Considering the fact that it has 25% more cores than the 9900K means that there's not a whole lot of under the hood magic going on here. There's barely any IPC improvements going on the 9900K just being a good chip the 10900K now, like, why Intel? Just to say you have more, but AMD has more. They have 16, you have 10. It's kind of sad. Any performance increase it looks like we're getting out of the 10D series does look like it's gonna be coming out of the higher core count, which is kind of sad. But then there's also a new 10th gen product coming out from Intel, their Frost Canyon Nook, which looks to be kind of intriguing. It's gonna have a 10D 710U processor um, and a bunch of other stuff added into it. And the pricing on it, which starts at $680, doesn't look to be too bad. So in case you like Nooks, uh, Intel still probably is the way to go with those. But then let's switch gears on over to RAM and NAND flash. Apparently Samsung on New Year's Eve actually had a minutes long power outage, which doesn't sound too bad, except for the DRAM in NAND production is very uh, stability dependent. So the fact that they had a minutes long outage means that they're actually out of production for the next two to three days as they're trying to get their systems back up and running. And this could potentially result in tens of millions of dollars in losses. However, this might potentially be an okay thing because it does seem like Samsung has been sitting on a lot of inventory so they can flush this out instead of producing new ones and it would potentially help them to uh, work some inventory. But you know who's gonna be working some new inventory? Apple, it looks like, because they have apparently come to a new agreement with Imagination, who produced all of their GPUs up until the iPhone 7, at which point Apple said that they were gonna start producing their own GPUs, but um, that then resulted in Imagination having IP disputes and at them Apple poaching employees from Imagination uh, and then App Imagination going up for sale. Like it was a weird, crazy thing. Imagination is the one who made the announcement. Apple actually hasn't even commented it on it as of right now when I'm recording the hot news, but it says Imagination Technologies announces that it has a replaced the multi-year multi-use license agreement with Apple, first announced on February 6, 2014 with a new multi-year license agreement under which Apple has access to a wider range of Imagination's 
intellectual property in exchange for license fees. This could mean that they're gonna be going with a power VR GPU in these things, or it could just potentially mean that they're gonna integrate some of the things that they were having IP license disagreements with into their still self-produced uh, GPUs. It doesn't necessarily mean that Imagination's gonna be producing anything. It could just be that Apple now can go ahead lawsuit uh, free or worry free. Uh, with the next generation of GPUs that they're producing. And while there's a lot of mystery surrounding the GPU side, it doesn't look like there's any mystery surrounding the CPU side, with TSMC being yet again confirmed to be producing the next generation chips for what is likely going to be the iPhone 12. This is actually going to be a pretty remarkable feat because this will likely be the first consumer device built on TSMC's five nanometer process. The A12 chip from Apple was the first seven nanometer consumer SOC that we got to see out in the wild. So TSMC producing five nanometers first for Apple makes a whole lot of sense. They give them a lot of money. TSMC gives them exclusive firsts. But TSMC, Imagination, and Qualcomm all seem to be the chip makers or part of the chip making process for the next generation of iPhone, Qualcomm being for the 5G modems, Imagination for the GPUs, and then TSMC for the CPUs. And then just a little quick factoid about music, the RIAA is saying that streaming now accounts for up to 80% of all music listening in the US market. That's up from 7% in 2010, which makes a lot of sense considering like I barely had my first smartphone in 2010. So I like Spotify wasn't even on my radar. So yeah, I have it now. I didn't have it then. Of course, there's a huge increase. And there's gonna be a huge increase in the autonomous driving sector with Bosch now saying that they are making LiDAR sensors for autonomous cars. The idea is that they're gonna produce it in such large quantities that they would be able to keep the cost down. LiDAR is used to map the streets and making sure that uh, anything that's within close range isn't gonna get run over by the car. Tesla, which is probably the furthest ahead consumer self-driving uh, vehicle, doesn't use LiDAR. Elon Musk actually being a staunch LiDAR anti-advocate oppressor he doesn't like lidar for a lot of reasons but we'll see if tesla ever adopts a lidar system but you know who's adopting a lot of witcher you guys because it broke yet another concurrent record on january 1st which a lot of people had the day off to play they broke over 100,000 concurrent players on steam with the previous record being in the 98,000 region so a lot of people enjoying the new uh fantasy game hope you enjoyed it and if you missed our video where we checked out how to best replay it make it more lore friendly we covered that in a mod video right up there and then India, who has had a couple failed attempts at landing on the moon, has announced that they are indeed going to be going to the South Pole on the moon again this year with their third lunar lander trying to make the uh, landing. And then just the last little bit of news, it looks like Google's DeepMind AI is being used for a lot of health reasons, which includes breast cancer detection in some mammograms. And what they're finding is that with the AI, it actually is better than a single radiologist in not only detecting the breast cancer, but also giving less false positives. They said that the false positives were down 5.7% from US radiologists and 1.2% from UK radiologists, and that it's actually comparable to two radiologists taking a look at the mammogram, which the second radiologist would be for a second opinion. So the AI is actually making a lot of strides in making sure that medical diagnoses uh, have more accuracy. I'm, I'm gonna accurately predict that this episode of Hot News is coming to a close. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content that we're gonna be releasing in 2020. Hope you guys have had a fabulous start to the new year, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. But AMD's GPU doesn't, or, but AMD, or, well,